This is the sad story of Mr. Bump. The trouble was that Mr. Bump just could not help having little accidents. If there was something for Mr. Bump to bump into, he'd bump into it all right. For instance, if you were to see Mr. Bump walking down the street in your town, and if there happened to be something to bump into down that street, then you know what would happen, don't you? Bump! Mr. Bump was just the same at home. He lived in an ex... Mr. Fussy was fussy about everything. Absolutely everything had to be neat and tidy and in its proper place. Mr. Fussy spent all day and every day rearranging his furniture and making sure that the flowers grew in a straight line in his garden and trying to find specks of dust where there couldn't possibly be specks of dust because he spent all his time making sure that there weren't any specks of dust. One fine morning, Mr. Fussy was having breakfast. He was very fussy about what he ate. He opened the marmalade pot. Oh, he exclaimed, it's got bits in it. And he spent the rest of the morning separating the bits from the marmalade. Or, oh, if you prefer, the marmalade from the bits. Fussy old fuss pot, people used to call him. Then Mr. Fussy went out into his garden, and he spent the rest of the day straightening out all the blades of grass on his lawn. Fussy old fuss pot. That evening, Mr. Fussy was in his kitchen, ironing his shoelaces, when he heard a crash outside. What's to do, he murmured to himself, and hurried outside to investigate. There, with a broken garden oh, gate in one hand, nice and, and an old battered suitcase in the other, and a sheepish oh, grin on his things, face, uh, nice and stood an untidy person, Ask Mr. Bessie. Mr. Clumsy. Oh, we make things, uh, nice Whoops, and neat. he said, Mr. Meat, holding up the garden gate. Oh, it came off in the end. Is that, um, who? Now the house is so neat and tidy. You? are much too messy to live in it. But, 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 said Mr. Messy. But whatever Mr. Messy said was no use, and Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy whisked him off to the bathroom upstairs. It had been the messiest room in the house, but now, of course, it was as bright as a new pin. Then Mr. Neat got hold of one of Mr. Messy's arms, and Mr. Tidy got hold of the other arm, and they picked him up and put him straight into the bath. Mr. Messy wasn't used to having baths. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy washed and brushed, and cleaned, and scrubbed, and combed Mr. Messy until he didn't look like Mr. Messy at all. In fact, he looked the opposite of Messy. He looked at himself in the mirror. You, you know what I'm going to have to do now? Use my back, he said in a rather fierce voice. And there was a crocodile. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy looked worried. Use my back. What, uh, and there was a what are you going to have to do? Use yes, my Mr. back. And there was I'm going to have to change my name, said Mr. This is a story about <laughs> Mr. Daydream. You know what he looks like, don't you, because you've seen him at the beginning. It's also a story about a little boy called Jack. And you don't know what he looks like, so here's a picture of him. Now, Jack was a very well-behaved little boy. He always ate up his lunch, he always went to bed when he was told, he always said please and thank you. But, Jack was a daydreamer. Whenever he was supposed to be thinking about something, he found himself thinking about something else. Daydreaming. One day, Jack was at school. He was sitting at his desk, listening to the teacher talking about history. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Jack saw something outside the window, on the grass in front of the school. It was a small, cloud-shaped something. Jack couldn't believe his eyes. The figure looked at Jack, looking at him, smiled, and waved. Jack looked at his teacher, who was still talking. Then he got up, quietly. That was required. And slipped out. He crossed the grass to a strange-looking... One night, cloud-shaped Two figure. days before Hello, Christmas, yes. it started to snow. All night it snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed. Millions and billions and trillions of big white soft snowflakes covered the whole wide world. When morning came, it was quite amazing to see just how much snow had fallen. All the houses, all the trees, all the roads and all the fields were covered.
It was almost as if a huge white blanket had been gently laid over everything. Everywhere you looked was white. And then the sun came out. And so did the children. They were all dressed up and muffled up, wearing scarves and woolies and gloves and boots, so that they wouldn't catch cold. All the children were so excited to see so much snow. Which isn't surprising, really, because there was more snow than there'd ever been before. Some of them went on their sledges, racing down the hill. One more trick of luck. There was a terrible pandemonium. Eventually, he thought he's had enough fun. Some of them who didn't have... That day, Mr. Tickle tickled everybody. He tickled the doctor. He tickled the butcher. He even tickled old Mr. Stamp, the postman, who dropped all his letters into a puddle. Then Mr. Tickle went home. Sitting in his armchair in his small house at the other side of the wood, he laughed and laughed and laughed every time he thought about all the people he'd tickled. <laughs> oh dear! Oh! <laughs> Thank you.